So in this problem, we're told that two crates of mass 65 kilograms and 125 kilograms are in contact at rest on a horizontal surface. And so we're going to have this 650 Newton force, right? And so this force is going to act on this system. And essentially what we're going to be doing is solving for a bunch of things. So the first thing they want us to do for A is find the acceleration of the system. So the first thing you always do whenever dealing with problems with forces and stuff, you want to draw your free body diagram. So let's go ahead and label the different forces acting on the system. So obviously we have the force of gravity on each of these. So I'm going to call this box one, and this is going to be box two. So the, uh, the force of gravity on this one would just be mg. So m1g, and then this one would be m2g, right, acting on this. And then we have the normal force uh, pointing up on each of them. So we'll call this uh, fn1 and then fn2. And so that's going to be that. And then what we also have is the force of friction because they tell us that the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.18. So we're going to have a force of friction acting this way. And so this force of friction, I'm just going to call it F, just FF, the force of friction. And so keep in mind, it's going to be the force of friction of both boxes. So uh, I'm just going to call the force of friction of one and two. So when we add this force, we have to add up the force of friction of both. All right. So how do we go ahead and solve this problem? So we know that the sum of the forces in the X is going to be equal to MA, where MA is the mass of the system and the acceleration of the system. So if we can add up all the forces in the X, solve for them, and then we know the mass of the system, we can solve for the acceleration of the system, right? So first we need to find all the forces in the X of the system. So looking at this, these aren't going to be of any use except for when solving for it, but uh, they're not included since these are all in the Y direction. So the only force we need to solve for is the force of friction uh, acting in this direction. So how do we do that? So you need to know the formula for the force of friction. The force of friction is equal to mu sub k times the normal force. Right. So we're going to solve for the force of friction of each box, add them together, and that's going to be the force of friction of both of them. And that's going to be what we plug in here. So let's start with the first box. So the force of friction of the first box we know is going to be equal to mu sub k times f of n1. So the normal or the coefficient of kinetic friction mu sub k is equal to 0.18 times the normal force, which is uh, just going to be equal to m1g, right? Because if we solve for the sum of the forces in the y, we can, right, it's going to be equal to zero since it's not moving in that direction. We just know f of n1 minus what's on the bottom is going to be equal to zero. So essentially, they're just equal to each other, but that should just be pretty intuitive at this point. Uh, so these are just going to be equal. So the normal force is just m1g. Uh, so uh, the mass of it is 65 kg, and then multiply that by 9.8. So let me go ahead and plug that in my calculator. So we have 0.18 times 65 times 9.8. So you're going to get it equals 114.66, and this is Newton's. Yeah. Now let's do the second one. Uh, we'll call it FF2 is equal to, let me zoom out a bit. We have mu sub k times F of n2. So it's going to be 0.18 times and then once again it's just m2g for this box so the mass times acceleration due to gravity so 0.18 plus 125 plus or sorry not plus times 0.18 times 125 times uh, 9.8 so you're gonna get 220.5 and this is once again going to be newton since we're doing force now we can add these up and they're going to be equal to this force right here. So FF12 is equal to 114.66 plus 220.5. So let me go ahead and do that. Great. So it's going to be equal to 335.16 newtons. So now we have all the forces in the X. We have this one and this one. So we can set it equal to MA and divide by the mass and we'll get our acceleration. Okay, so let's just write it out here. Some of the forces in the X equal MA, which means MA is equal to... So we have this one going in the right, so I'm going to call the right direction positive. So 650 minus our force of friction, which we found right here, 335.16. So go ahead and subtract that. You're going to get MA equals 314 uh, 0.84 divide by the mass of the system. So divide by M. What is M? So M is just their mass is added up, right? Because we're dealing with the whole system here since we added these up. 
So it's divided by 65 plus 125, since those are the masses of each of the blocks. So go ahead and do that. 65 plus 125. And yeah, you're going to get the acceleration of our system is equal to 1.657. So keep in mind that uh, we're dealing with newtons and kilograms, so just standard units, meters per second squared. So that's going to be your acceleration or your answer to part A. So now we have uh, the acceleration of the system, and now we're going to be solving for the uh, force that each of the crates exert on each other. And then for the second one, we're going to reverse their order. So uh, let's go ahead and do that down here. So this is going to be B. And so for B, when we're solving for the force exerted on a thing, generally what you want to do is just separate that into its own system. So I'm just going to take this box right here, and I'm going to draw a free body diagram of it on its own. So if we do that here, 65 kg. Okay, so what forces do we have acting on it? And you'll see why we do this in a second. But again, once again, we have M1G. We have the normal force. And then FN1. And then we have the force being applied. I'm going to draw it over here just because it makes it a bit easier to read. Uh, so we can just call it force applied. And then we have the force of friction of the box. We'll call this F. F1, since this is just box one. So since we're only dealing with this box, we don't have to add them up like we did here. And then we also have what we're asking them, what we're trying to solve for is the force applied on box one due to the second one. So uh, I'm gonna call it F12. And so F12 is what we're, what we're solving for in this one. Okay, great. So uh, once again, we're gonna do the same method where we sum the forces in the X, but keep in mind it's not, or keep in mind that it's gonna be equal to MA here where we do know MA. So the last one we solved for the A, right? But this one we know for we know it, so we're going to use it to solve for F1 too. So now you just want to sum up the forces in the X. So um, yeah, so we have the force applied, we'll call it FAP plus or sorry minus FF1 minus F12 equals MA. So F12 minus it is going to be equal to FF1 or sorry minus f applied plus f f1 and then um plus ma and then just minus it to switch their signs so f applied uh, minus f f1 minus ma so hopefully you can see that uh and then so all we have to do is just plug in our values now so what was the force applied on the system once again it's 650 um so 650 minus the force of friction on the first box. So we found that up here. Uh, FF1 is 114.66. And then what is the mass of the system? Uh, keep in mind it's just 65. So 65 times the acceleration of the system, which we found in part A. So 1.657, 1.657. Great, so plug this in, 650 minus 114.66. 66 minus 65 times 1.657. And so you're going to get the force applied on for B is 427.635. You can round this however you want. I'm just going to write 430. So 440, 430 newtons. That's going to be your answer to B. So that's going to be the force applied onto the first box. Um, or the force they're applying to each other, right? Because there's going to be a normal force when you apply it. Um, so yeah, that's going to be your answer for B. Now we want to do C. So assuming in this one they say to uh, repeat with the crates reversed. So I think what they want us to do is assume that uh, this is now in the front. So uh, yeah, so if this is in the front now, we can just draw it like this. So I'm going to move this one to the front. So now we're going to just do the same thing, but with the 125 kilogram. Um, so draw the stuff again. So this is M2G. This is the, yeah, so M2G, this is FN2. We still have the force being applied. It's the same. But this one, we have the force of friction of the second box. So FF2, and then we can call this F21, right? The force being applied on the two due to one. Um, yeah, so this is going to be our free body diagram. We're going to repeat the same steps. Uh, just with our new box here. So Fx equals Ma. So the force applied 
is or sorry force applied minus ff2 minus f21 equals ma so if we solve for f right so we have minus f21 equals minus f applied plus f f2 plus ma so getting rid of the minus sign f applied minus f f2 minus ma so we know all these values we just have to plug it in so 650 newtons minus uh, the force of friction the second box we found up here 220.5 so we have 220.5 and then minus ma the mass of this box is 125 and then the acceleration we found was 1.657 from the first part so go ahead and plug this in 650 minus 220.5 minus 125, 1.657. So you're going to get it equals 222.375. So you can just round it to 220 or whatever you want to do. And so what you should notice is that both of these forces are going to add up to the 650, right? 220 plus that is 650. So that's just a quick check. Uh, so 220 newtons, that's going to be your answer to C or however you want to round it. But yeah, so... Uh, this would be your answer. This is the acceleration of our system. This is going to be. Uh, this is going to be uh, your answer to B, right? And then if they're reversed, this is going to be your answer. So, yeah, these are going to be your answers, and hopefully, you found this useful.